Do you feel overwhelmed by the world? Are you influenced by it in any way? Let's find out a way to deal with the world that keeps us sane in an insane world. With the world increasing at speed, people think that it's natural to be engaged in a lot of things and to have an opinion and to have thoughts on every little thing in the world. For whatever reason, it's not normal now to say, look, I just don't know about that situation or I don't know what that is. That used to be very common back when I was younger. But in this day and age, with the advent of the internet and having access to all the information in the world, apparently we should know everything. But what we become is a know-it-all, but the truth is we're an expert in nothing. We might know the surface information of certain things, but we don't really know anything at any great depth. And so we have diminished the expert in that perspective where people undermine an expert in a certain field and they want to feel like they want to save face. So they want to act as if they know what that person understands very deeply. And so that's the type of world we live in at the moment where it's increasingly busy, we're overstimulated with information, we're overstimulated with food, with everything, right? So we've created this constantly busy world where there's this underlying anxiety. And one of the problems is we become politically charged where we have a side, right? Where we say this side is more logical than the other side. And then we pick a side and then we fight each other. And the key is to having no sides, right? And the problem is here, and I find this within people who even follow the spiritual path is they will have a political leaning and you should not have a political leaning because then you are not staying neutral, right? You are still engaged in the world. And staying neutral is a spiritual strategy for health and harmony and sanity going forward as you progress on the path. And even if you understand the deeper tenets of spirituality say if you understand the non-dual truth of reality a lot of people in their character can still be very influenced by the ebb and flow of cultural and social change and so you need to stay neutral you should not have a side but the world is so busy so people get unconsciously influenced by whatever is around them in their environment or what they read or what they watch. And then that influences their way of thinking, right? In my book, Fasting the Mind, I talk about guarding the nine gates, but these two are the most important. What you consume through your eyes and ears. You need to go on somewhat of a digital diet where you're not consuming all of this content, which then influences your way of thinking. And then that conditions you to pick a side, right? And once you have a side, then off down the rabbit hole you go. You will hold a negative perspective on other people who are on the other side and you will criticize them. Then you'll get engaged in political debates. And if you know anything about Eastern spirituality, you are trying to diminish political thinking altogether because political thinking is a byproduct of duality. And if you're moving towards non-duality, then the political thinking will subside. And so it's about staying neutral. Now, in India, there's a famous mudra. Now, mudra is a hand gesture, right? A hand gesture. And there's a famous mudra, and it's just this. Sometimes you'll see a sage or a yogi do the two hands, but in general, it's just this. You'll see the Buddha do it, Shankara. If you go to India, you'll see the sages and the yogis and the sadhus doing this as well. It's what is called the Abhaya Mudra. Now, the Abhaya Mudra can mean many things. A lot of people say it's the gesture of fearlessness. Some people say it offers protection to those who receive the Abhaya Mudra from a sadhu or yogi, and that's all correct. But it can also mean that I'm good, right? I'm not engaged in the world. I'm not involved in the world. Abhaya Mudra. Hey, man, I want you to be involved in all of this. I want you to get engaged in this. What's your thoughts on this? What's your opinion on this? Abhaya Mudra. You're good. You don't need to be involved. I have a sadhu friend in Tiruvannamalai who I speak to quite often. And from mid-November to mid-December, there's a big festival called Kattakai Deepam. 
it's when the moon is in a particular location in the sky and people circumambulate around the holy mountain of Arunachala. And I remember I was in Tiruvannamalai last year and I was speaking to my sadhu friend and I said, are you going to circumambulate around Arunachala? And he's like, I buy a mudra. I'm good. I don't need anything in this life. He's at that point where he doesn't even need to engage in these type of festivals because these type of festivals, probably according to him, are for people who are laymen and aren't a strict spiritual aspirant like himself. And I say strict here, right? People who are doing circumambulating are a spiritual aspirant, but maybe there's a level here where he's a sadhu and he's completely given away life. So when he does a Bayamudra, mudra, he's completely given up worldliness. Right, So not even to the point of taking a side and being neutral, he's given up worldliness itself. And so he doesn't have a home, he sleeps on the side of the road, and he just practices meditation and gets the food that is given to him. And that's his path. It's kind of like a shramana in the ancient times. A shramana in ancient times was someone who would just walk straight ahead and would only take the food that was given to them, but they wouldn't walk towards the town, right? Gautama the Buddha was a strict shramana. Some shramanas, they will walk towards the town so they get some food, but the Buddha just walked completely straight. And that's what a lot of people who follow that type of abhaya mudra, like I was mentioning to you, I don't want anything from the world. I will only get what is given to me, but I won't take anything from the world. And so we can learn a lot from that in the modern day, right? Because we live in a generation where we're just taking, taking, taking and giving nothing. And so a sadhu and a yogi and a sage who practice abhaya mudra in the sense of they don't want anything from the world, they've given the world up. They're just going to get what is given. We can learn a lot from those type of people. And so when you're in that state, you're in a neutral state, right? I could ask my friend, for example, what do you think about this, Abhaya Mudra? What do you think about that, Abhaya Mudra? doesn't have an opinion, does not care one way or the other what people think about it or think about them, or he has no thoughts about anyone else as well. To him, because I know him personally, everything is good. Everything is good because he practices this neutrality and this practice of a biomudra where you're not involved in the world at all. You've even given up worldly possessions, right? Now, I'm not advising that any of you should do that, but it is an inspiration for us who are in society, who are engrossed with material possessions and opinions and this and that, where we too can practice a biomudra, right? We can practice that, hey, I don't want to get involved in whatever you're talking about. So when someone asks you in the future, hey, what's your thoughts on this? Abhaya Mudra. Hey, what do you think this person should do? Abhaya Mudra. What's your thoughts and feelings on this? Abhaya Mudra. It's all good. From where you are, you are fearless. You do not care one way or the other. You have renounced all of this bias within yourself that sees the world from a subjective viewpoint. And if only the world knew that they were viewing the world from their own subjective viewpoint, and if they understood that, that it all came from their conditioning, maybe a lot of people would revert easily back to being neutral. We could then stay neutral. And I remember growing up, it was very easy for a lot of people to stay neutral because we weren't bombarded with digital technology back in the day. You only had the six o'clock news, and if you didn't watch that, it wasn't the end of the world. It really wasn't. It truly wasn't. And so I often tell people that humans are naturally analog. We're not digital. We're not designed for that type of input, that type of digital input, constant input. Okay, digital technology can be great. You guys can watch what I'm saying right now. But how often do we consume the content on digital technology? We go from one video to the next, to the next, to the article, then we watch a movie, then this and that, and it just bombards the senses. And so we lose contact with our true nature. And so that's why I say we're analog, because once you become more neutral, you are more analog naturally. You just sort of move about your life. You don't have many opinions. You are not consuming too many things. And you're more shanti. 
It's just natural. And so that's what I wanted to speak to you guys about today, about the practice of Abhaya Mudra and staying neutral, being neutral in the world, not having an opinion, having the courage and the bravery to not have an opinion in a world that is always asking you, hey, what is your opinion? What's your two cents on this issue? I don't have two cents. My pockets are empty. It's all good. I'm neutral. I am neutral in all circumstances. I don't have an opinion on this or that because this or that was created by a mind that is conditioned. So if it was created by a mind that was conditioned, then I would be engaging in an illusion itself. So instead of that, I practice a Bayer Mudra. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.